Welcome back to The Mental Dietitian. I'm your host, Aaron Lynch Potter. And today's episode is about resistance. And I'm reading this book for the first time. I don't know why it took me so long. I've heard about this book for years, but it is blowing my mind. And this episode is really just what I've learned and what lessons that I've really been feeling lately based on this book and how a lot of my life has made sense because of the lessons that I've learned in 30 pages, so 36 pages of this little book right here, which is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. You may have heard of this book, and if you've read it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't read it, this is an invitation to read it because resistance is everywhere. And I'm going to read some things that I got out of this book that really, really hit me. So the first one, the first one here is, give me one moment here. Okay, here it is. What does resistance feel like? First, unhappiness. We feel like hell. A low-grade misery pervades everything. We're bored. We're restless. We can't get no satisfaction. Betty Benassi. <laughs> There's guilt, but we can't put our finger on the source. We want to go back to bed. We want to get up and party. We feel unloved and unlovable. We're disgusted. We hate our lives. We hate ourselves. Unalleviated resistance mounts to a pitch that becomes unendurable. At this point, vices kick in. Dope, adultery, web surfing. Beyond that, resistance becomes clinical. Depression, aggression, dysfunction. Then actual crime can occur and physical self-destruction. Sounds like life. I know. It isn't. It's resistance. What makes it tricky is that we live in a consumer culture that's acutely aware of this unhappiness and has massed all its profit-seeking artillery to exploit it by selling us a product, a drug, a distraction. John Lennon once wrote, well, you all think you're so clever and classless and free, but you're all fucking peasants as far as I can see. As artists and professionals, it is our obligation to enact our own internal revolution, a private insurrection inside our own skulls. In this uprising, we free ourselves from the tyranny of consumer culture. We overthrow the programming of advertising, movies, video games, magazine, TV, social media, by which we have been hypnotized from the cradle. We unplug ourselves from the grid by recognizing that we will never cure our restlessness by contributing our disposable income to the bottom line of bullshit ink, but by only doing our work. Holy shit, what a beautifully worded two pages of this book. And every single page has things like that. Every single page is full of just different things like that. And it's just... It's amazing. That excerpt right there really hit me. Really, really hit me. Because for a very long time, I have wanted to do certain things in my life, including this podcast. And a lot of people want to do things in their life, and they've wanted to do things for many, many years but have you noticed there's always an excuse? There's always a reason not to go after what you really want. Always. There's always something you can do. For example, I have been working on my website for my coaching business for about a month and a half, two months now. And I sat down to do all the copy for the website, which is very important. It's from my heart. It is basically what I want to communicate to somebody that ends up going on my website and how I want them to feel based on that. It was 
literally, let's have a look here. Let's see how many pages this actually was. Let's have a look here. So I can tell you accurately how ridiculous this was. So it was nine, it was eight pages, eight pages of writing on a Word document. That took me about a month. When in reality, the time I actually took on those eight pages, probably about two to three hours. I stretched that two to three hours over about a month. Why? Resistance. It's this, it's like the opposite of your dreams. If you want to achieve something really big and you want to do something which is, which is from a soul-centered, heart-centered place, there's going to be resistance. There's going to be a force pushing back at you just as much as the force of that feeling inside you of what you really want and what you know you deserve. And with some of my coaching clients, like I'm reading this book, I'm like, if you let that push you against you too long, that resistance, some people have called it the devil. Some people call it Satan. Some people call it shame. Some people call it, some people blame it on other entities. Whatever language you want to use, it is real. And I have seen resistance in every single one of those forms. Have you seen demons? Yes. Like actually, yes. Do you want to talk about it? Not really. <laughs> Not really. And the mind is powerful and the mind will create and attract things that depression, anxiety, sickness, all because you are going after something or you're out of alignment with what your true self is or what your soul's journey is on this planet, whatever that is. There's this beautiful quote that every time I hear it, I get goosebumps. And it's what Mike Tyson said to Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou was a U UFC heavyweight champion who was not happy with how fighters were being paid. And he, was, he didn't get treated the way that he wanted to get treated from the UFC. And he said, I'm going to go out and create my own income and create my own destiny outside of the UFC when a lot of people told him that that would be impossible. Francis Ngannou went on to make $20 million from a boxing fight. And I think he made another $20 million from a boxing fight, which didn't go his way, but he dared to go out there. He dared to go out there and get what he really truly deserved when 15, 20 years ago, he was working in a sand mine in Cameroon and was battling crippling poverty. It's an amazing story. Hopefully they make a movie about it one day. Saying all of that, and he went and did that. And he was in the process of doing that. Mike Tyson did a podcast with him and he looks at him and Mike Tyson's had a hard life. And this moment, I highly recommend you go look at it. Go look at it on YouTube. And in his lisp, he's like, when you're favored by God, you're also favored by the devil. And that right there, I'm not a I'm not a religious person, but I know exactly what he's talking about. I've felt that. I've felt that in my own version where if there's something that is inside of you that you really want, that you really want to go after, a vision, a dream, a goal. Like for my friend, there's a guy I know, Jamie Siraj. I'm going to have him on the podcast soon. He's a an up-and-coming MMA fighter. The amount of resistance that that guy has gone through, he almost died of an autoimmune condition. It, it was horrendous. And he, he gets back after taking two years off, literally being on the brink of death, gets a fight, wins the fight. His goal is the UFC. That's his goal. It's been his goal for years and years and years. And he gets the opportunity to potentially go down to the Ultimate Fighter Series. And all of a sudden, it doesn't happen there. It doesn't happen for some reason. Shit goes sideways. He's reaching out to different organizations to try and get a fight, to try it. He just needs one more fight to get into the UFC. He's got an amazing record. I think it's nine and two. If he was 10 and two, he's getting the UFC. He's one of the 
best prospects in Canada. That guy right now is dealing with resistance. He's dealing with resistance. The thing he wants most is so close, but also there's all these things in his life pushing back against him. And I see it everywhere. I see it within myself. I see it in people like Jamie. I see it in lots of different people that resistance is always there. And a lot of people, they use it as a sign. Oh, well, that's maybe just, it's maybe it's just a sign that I'm not meant to do that. I've heard Christian people say this is like, well, God wouldn't put a vision in your heart if you didn't couldn't achieve it. He wouldn't give you that vision. The universe, whatever language you want to use around that, it's very interesting and it's very true. And if you are favored by God or the universe or whatever language you want to do and you have been given a vision about how you want to live your life and it's not how you're currently living your life, talking about me right now too, I have visions, I have goals, I have big dreams that the resistance will push back on that. And you'll take a month to do something that takes two hours. There's another thing right now that's the same thing for me, which is a course that I'm building, a workshop I'm building. And every time I sit down to do it, my brain's like, go on Instagram. Maybe you should go to the gym. You haven't lifted weights much this week. You, uh, haven't spent time with Lexi the way you should. Oh, maybe you should do do that. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, that's the resistance. It's called procrastination. It's called distraction. It is so hard to navigate sometimes. And if you're having a hard time with that journey right now, read this book. I cannot recommend it enough. It will give you it'll make you realize that you're not alone, that there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. It's not because you can't sit down and focus. It's not because life's against you. It's because there's a force called resistance or the way that Stephen Pressfield labels that force. And like I said, many people label it in many different ways. If you're looking through a religious lens, they might call it Satan, the devil, jinn, entities, what demons, whatever you want to call it. And it does feel like that. It really does feel like that. It feels like that there's something trying to corrupt you. Other people have called it the anti-you. That there's you and there's the anti-you. I've experienced it through uh, love versus shame. As in shame is a like an emotional cancer that will grow in the background and will make you feel small and convince you that you are not worth living the life that you want to live. Love is the antidote to that. Abundance is the antidote to that. A lot of people say God is love. I can get on board with that. Just replace the word God with love. Love is the antidote. Abundance is the antidote. And every time you feel resistance, every time you feel that feeling, rather than seeing it as a stop sign, what if you started seeing it as a compass? What if you're like, that's the fucking direction I need to go, even though this feels like I'm, like I'm, imagine you're running all of a sudden and you run into a whole, a, a wall of honey and you've got to run and try and keep up the same pace and you're trying to get through this honey and you're like, holy shit. That's what resistance feels like. And we've been talking about it mythologically in our stories for years. All the great movies that we love are like that. For example, Lord of the Rings. Think about all the resistance that Frodo had to go through to actually get the ring into Mount Doom. All the resistance that Harry Potter had to go to to eventually destroy Voldemort. All the resistance that Luke Skywalker had to go through to eventually destroy the Death Star. It goes on and on. The resistance that William Wallace had to go through and he ended up dying anyway, but the message he sent about Scotland's freedom, all the resistance that the character Russell Crowe played in The Gladiator had to go through, he also died, but he sent a message. All these great movies, all these stories that we love have resistance. That quote I absolutely love. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. 
what you are looking for is on the other side of the resistance. It is not a stop sign. It is a compass. Don't stop going after the dream and the vision that is in your heart that was given to you by your soul, the universe, God, Allah, whatever language you want to use, whatever belief system you use, whatever lens you look at life through, don't stop. You might never, ever get there. Who knows? Who knows? You never know what life can bring you, but the alternative, the alternative is getting to the end of your life and not saying, oh, I couldn't go for it. I didn't go for it. And fuck that. I don't want to feel that. You don't want to feel that. Go after whatever that thing is for you in your life right now and have an amazing week. And I'll talk to you next week.